Hey, how you doing? God bless you. Uh, as you guys know, some of you know, I'm writing my, my testimony and um, be releasing it in about two months called uh, Lost in the Storm. And I um, just wanted to share a little bit of it just so you got to get an idea of how it's going to be like. Um, first of all, I have Bible study tonight. Uh, everybody's invited to Bible study. Uh, even if you live out of state, the other side of the world doesn't matter. We broadcast it on Facebook, on the House of Rest uh, Church Facebook page, and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, but <clears throat> like I said, I, I, I was in solitary confinement, and I wrote my book. It's 220 pages. I have this, and um, I'm just kind of going through, changing some things, because my writing style has gotten a lot better because I wrote this at that time, uh, during 2005 and 2006, so I was in solitary for a year uh, during my six-year sentence. And I wanted to share this with you to kind of give you a, a glimpse of not only the book, but what it's like for a believer, you know? So <clears throat> it's a couple paragraphs, guys. I just want to share it with you so you get a feel for... Um, my writing style, I guess, you know, if you haven't read The Mist of My Confusion and also God's Fingerprints, uh, Brother uh, Alfonso's book. But uh, just bear with me. I'm going to read about a page and a half of A Day in Solitary Confinement as a Christian and what that was like. So, um, all right, here it goes. Uh, it goes, I wake up once again in my small cell in solitary confinement. I have my daily program. Each inmate needs to program, not for anyone else, but for your own sanity. And let me explain for those that have never served time, much less in solitary. Without a program, you lose complete sense of time. The minutes, hours, and days slip by, and it all becomes one big eternity with no beginning and no end. One might think this wouldn't be a problem, but it is exactly what can drive a man to lose his mind. It is like having no map or GPS and no type of landmark to at least recognize where you are or what direction you're going. To this day, I truly believe that solitary confinement is a type of torture that leaves no bruises or scars that is visible by the human eye. So the best thing an inmate can do is create a program for himself. I would describe my own personal program to give you a better idea. In the morning, I'm awakened by the officer serving breakfast through the slot in the cell door. First, I hear the wheels of the food cart and the giant keys opening the slots of those to the left of my cell. It gets louder as the officer gets closer to my own cell. The slot swings inward and becomes a sort of shelf or small table to hold the food tray. Due to the fact that the unit I am in is solitary confinement, it takes quite a bit of time to serve each inmate. It reminds me of my childhood when my dad raised pigs and would serve them food in their trough every day at the same time. It was like clockwork as the pigs would get excited when my dad would walk up to their pig pen to feed them. I would grab the tray of food and put it on my table that was attached to the wall. I would quickly wash up and sit on my stool that was also connected to the floor. I would pray and thank God for the food and I'd eat my breakfast. There was always an orange or an apple. I always saved that for a, for a snack later on in the day. Once breakfast was over, I would clean up my cell, which included cleaning my floor, my sink and toilet and making up my bed. Then I would open my Bible and study and read until lunchtime. Once lunch came, which consisted of a bagged lunch of two sandwiches, a small carton of fruit punch, and another piece of fruit. For me, the worst part of lunch was even though I was given two sandwiches, I was only given one single pack of mayonnaise. So either I spread the single pack over both sandwiches and I didn't taste anything besides the dry bread, or I'd spread it over one sandwich and actually taste the mayo in one of them, and the other sandwich, I would just eat it dry. Once lunch was over, I would take a short nap. 
So now half of my day was over with, and I was glad. Each 24 hours that passed by was one day closer to being released and free. After my nap, I would wake up and write letters to my children, to my parents or brothers. I made sure to write my children almost daily for the entire time I was incarcerated. I didn't want them to forget me. My youngest daughter was too young to read, so I would draw her pictures of cartoons and color them in for her along with a small note on the corner of how much I loved her. By the time I was finished with my letters and they were sealed and addressed, I would spend some more time in the Bible before dinner. Once dinner came, it was basically the same routine as breakfast, with the slot of the door brought down and the food tray given. Once dinner was over, it was time for me to either draw or read a novel for my enjoyment and entertainment. A book cart was always in the unit and was usually changed out every, every week or so with different books that were on rotation from other units. It was actually exciting when we would get a book cart. It was one of the highlights during my time in isolation. Then the end of the day would always end with prayer. I would pray for each of my children and family members and others that were on my heart every single night. It was also during the late nights that I would write sermons and send them to my mom and dad. What I just described to you was my program. It was how I broke up my day, and most important of all, is that I kept my mind occupied. Of course, some days were harder than others, and other small things helped break up the days, such as two or three days, every, such as every two or three days I was given an hour outside of my cell, and I could take a shower or use the phone or just walk around in my unit. Also, 30-minute visits from family and friends three times a week. So anyways, guys, um, that's just a little bit of um, Lost in the Storm I'll be releasing as a book in, in about two months. I'm just trying to wrap it up. Uh, I wrote it while in solitary, but of course my writing style has improved, so I'm, I'm changing things around. And I uh, just wanted to share a little bit with you guys. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have Bible study tonight at 7 o'clock at House of Rest Church, 1231 uh, 8th Street, Suite 300 in Modesto. And uh, we also always broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you go to YouTube, just type in David Rocha. You'll, you'll find our channel so you can subscribe to it. That way you get uh, notifications because we, uh, we uh, broadcast our Bible studies on Wednesdays and our services on Sunday or on Facebook, our House of Rest page for Facebook. Um, and that way uh, you can, you can uh, interact with us, you know, and, and join in on the Bible study. So anyways, guys, uh, God bless you. Hopefully I'll see you. I just wanted to share a little bit about this. If you came on late, uh, come back on and, uh, you know, it's going to be posted up and just check it out. You know, it's just interesting. I think it's interesting. And maybe it'll, it'll be interesting for somebody that, has never experienced that, you know. Um, but anyways, guys, God bless, and uh, hopefully I'll see you for Bible study.